It says deck in the Bible is greatly misunderstood, and I will explain why and how this misunderstanding began and how it should really be looked at. The story of Melchizedek is found in the book of Genesis, Genesis 14, 17 to 24. Melch in order to truly understand Melchizedek, we do have to accept that right here in Genesis 14, this, is provi this provides all the information that we actually need to understand about who Melchizedek is. Any later writings of concerning Melchizedek are merely interpretations and changes that were made, and I'm going to demonstrate to you why those changes were made concerning Melchizedek. Melchizedek is a mysterious figure who appears briefly in the narrative surrounding Abraham, the father of the Israelite nation. During Abraham's time, there was a regional conflict involving several kings. Abraham's nephew Lot was captured in the midst of this conflict, and upon hearing this news, Abraham gathered a small army of his own and pursued the captors. After a successful rescue mission, Abraham returned with the spoils of war. On his way back, Abraham encountered Melchizedek, who was described as the king of Jerusalem and also a priest of God most high. Now, this is the first place that we find an issue with the idea of Melchizedek and what you have grown to understand and know concerning who Melchizedek is. Uh, the first part is the fact that when it describes this in the Bible in Genesis chapter 14, what it talks about is the fact that during this battle, that this area of land to which they fought on had many pits in them. Tar pits is the normal way it's described. Now, your new Bibles are going to say that many men fell in them and then others fled. And they said they fell into the pits. That actually is a misunderstanding because the references around this is concerning a battle. And when you look at the older versions of the Bible, starting with your King James Version and your Septuagint and so on and so forth, it talks about how many men just fell, not falling into the tar pits, but simply just fell at this at this during this battle and one of the persons that you will realize who fell at this battle was the king of Sodom and there is where the conflict is going to arise because Melchizedek most likely in this point was originally written as a the son of that king of Sodom and so when he did go out to meet Abraham he met him as the new king of Sodom but of course the readers of the Bible understood what was going to happen with Sodom. So therefore they didn't want to see Melchizedek as the king of Sodom. So they changed him to be the king of Shalem or Jerusalem. And that is normally the place that people will place him in today's uh, understanding of who Melchizedek was. But in truth, Melchizedek would have been and is the king of Sodom after his father the previous king of Sodom fell during this battle against Abraham. And when he came, as often in these time frames, the kings were also considered to be high priest. I, Melchizedek brought out bread and wine, blessed Abraham, and pronounced a blessing on God's behalf. What makes Melchizedek intriguing is that... Now, him bringing out the bread and the wine and giving a blessing to Abraham and his deity and proclaiming his new deity to be uh, El Elyon, then that was him showing respect to Abraham that he had been defeated in battle. His father had been defeated in battle. And now he is asking for a tenth of the spoils to be returned back to him so that he can go back and then rule his kingdom. But what we're going to see later on when you read this portion of Genesis chapter 14 is that he then goes back and later on the king of Solomon of Sodom supposedly comes up to Abraham and asks Abraham for some of the spoils and Abraham declares that he will hold nothing back uh, the king originally just asked for the people but Abraham says that I will give you back the people and I will give you back all the other spoils that we had taken and therefore he's giving it all back because he had made this pledge now if he had already given a tenth to Melchizedek then how can he give back all the spoils of this battle against Sodom because all means all and that's all all means but later writers understood what was going to happen to Sodom and didn't want to see Melchizedek as an evil king over an evil city so therefore it was changed to the king of Shechem. that he is portrayed as both a king and a priest 
This encounter between Abraham and Melchizedek is significant because it establishes Melchizedek as a priestly figure superior to Abraham. Abraham rec Now, it does establish him in a superior position to Abraham, which is why they had to go back and change it because he could not be a superior priest to Abraham and yet and still be uh, the king of a city, Sodom, which is going to be destroyed because of its wickedness. So they had to make this change so that he would fit into the narrative. Recognized Melchizedek's authority and importance by giving him a tenth of the spoils from the battle. The author of Hebrews draws a Once again, he recognized the importance of after the battle, being able to bridge a portion of peace in this situation with the king of Sodom so that they will not come back and re-attack them again. So therefore he gave them that tenth of an offering according to this first part. And that was what one of some of the editors realized that they had to change the narrative concerning Melchizedek. Upon the story of Melchizedek to establish Jesus Christ as the ultimate high priest in the order of Melchizedek surpassing the priestly law now when the authors of the new testament which mentions melchizedek at least eight times eight or nine times this is because by the time you get to the writings concerning uh, the new testament melchizedek had already been changed into this priest of salem instead of being the uh king this king of salem instead of being the king of sodom so with Abraham giving reference to him and making him higher than the order of Aaron, then this brings about a situation where now these authors are referring to Melchizedek in this new way because the system had been changed for a few hundred years because understand the book of Genesis was written more than likely after the Babylonian captivity or during the Babylonian captivity in the sixth century BCE. So at least five, 600 years have passed and so the normal understanding, the agreed upon understanding of the narrative of Melchizedek had been changed to fit a different type of king. But like I said, when you go back and you read this story, you'll see that after Melchizedek, then the king of Sodom comes and asks for the people. But then Abraham gives him all the spoils that came from Sodom. This could only be so if Melchizedek was the king of Sodom. Line of Aaron and the Levitical priesthood. The story of Melchizedek, though brief, holds theological and symbolic importance in connecting Abraham's lineage and the promise of God to the future establishment of the priesthood of Jesus Christ. Melchizedek. Now, when it refers to the priesthood of Jesus Christ, what it's actually referring is the fact that the priesthood of Melchizedek was supposed to be understood as something that was going to be eternal, something that was going to last forever, and that was bigger and larger than the Levitical priest or the priestly line of Aaron. So, of course, uh, referencing Jesus to Melchizedek gives them that understanding of a higher authority than the previous priest line that is supposed to last for an eternity because by the time we're writing Hebrews and other uh, references to Melchizedek, this is um, at least 100 to 200 years after the theorized crucifixion of Jesus. Serves as a mysterious and revered figure, a foreshadowing of the eternal. Once again, he's not a mysterious figure. He's just a rewritten figure priesthood of Christ and a reminder of God's sovereignty and divine plan. This is the end of this episode. Follow for more. So it's not, a, it's a reminder because it's the narrative that they wanted it to fit in. But always remember, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibrations.